this is the tutorial for uh, the weather notification. So if you're interested how it looks like and what it does, you've got a link to the showcase article. Uh, you can watch the video there and read about it there. And let's start with the tutorial. You have to have an open weather account um, activated in order to get the uh, API key. The account is free and you can request up to 60 times per minute for free. So do that, get the key and you're going to be ready. The website also provides you with complete um, API information for uh, weather. So if you're interested, just click on the uh, Epidocs and uh, you'll see all the information uh, how to use it. One more thing that you should pay attention to is the list of all available conditions which is available on the website itself by clicking on the link. It will provide you with 10 different icons and uh, icon codes that will be available through the JSON file. If you've not played with the JSON files, I'll give you a quick overview. Basically, those are conditions that you can uh, read about it here and associate it name uh, of the file or name of the icon code which we're gonna use. Additional codes can be uh, found also on the website as well. If you never played with JSON, this is very organized data structure allowing us to access all the information we need in a very simplified way. So this is online JSON um, like viewer and you can see how the JSON file is stored. It's just a series of different trees. This uh, file is stored, um, well, this data structure allows us to extract certain uh, data. We're going to use the city name, we're going to use for each day uh, the timestamp, the temperature stamp, and we're also going to use the weather condition. If you fancy more information, obviously just browse the file itself and pick the variables or, or the names of the JSON files you've got there listed somewhere uh, within that tree. Uh, I limited my search to five. So you're only going to see five different lists with conditions for that uh, data uh, stamp, uh, date stamp, and uh, we're going to be processing these. You'll have to use the link on the screen to obtain this information. Uh, this is the place when you put your um, geographical uh, coordinates, so get them from the map, or you can create a profile for that as well if you want to. Then you have to enter your IP key uh, in here, and then you can select whether you want to have a metric or imperial um, units. And the last section is how many results you want to receive. I just set it to five. That will cover me for 12 hours. This link will be used for HTTP get ta tasker action. So let's open the tasker and let's start our tutorial. Our first task is the one that generates uh, the notification itself. I'm using HTTP get uh, to receive plain text and save it on a local location. Then I'm going to read the file and use JSON uh, read to read that information. Now, to configure this, um, use the format JSON, obviously. Uh, now, uh, disable simple mode because that only works for unique names and our names repeat uh, in a JSON file, so we have to uh, disable it. And uh, you can load the JSON directly from a variable or from the link. For the tutorial, I'll use the link. So this is the fields we're going to download. Uh, one for the temperature, one for the city name, one for the uh, weather conditions, uh, data stamp, uh, and for the icon itself, for the code for the icon. So this is temperature, this is the condition, and this is uh, time, and uh, we have icon and then city name. Notice that city name isn't an array because we only have one entry in a city name. Now, everything else, uh, I've not set anything, I didn't create a, um, custom names or anything. So when you go to overview of the plugin with all the information, you'll notice that the variable names will be changed. There will be no dots but underscores. Now we're creating a first for loop. We're going to process the data available from our least underscore dt, which contains the data stamp in seconds. I want that in like a readable format. So each variable from this array will be stored in time for the time of the loop, uh, and that variable will be processed. So I'm going to use auto tools time to change this value from seconds into human readable format. So I'm going to use first option, loader uh, value stored in time, and then format the date so I could get just hours and minutes. And make sure to select use seconds because default is milliseconds. Now, I've set output variable just to show you which variable we're going to use. 
And the description on the plugin screen is not correct. And uh, thank you for Tasker Pro uh, for helping me out with this because I got confused. This is the first variable you see, which is that time C date array. Now the last action, we have to create a new array and push it in the order. So I'm going to start pushing it from the bottom and it will replicate the same order as the list underscore DT. The second loop right now is optional because the auto notification got updated and I'm no longer have to, I'm no longer limited to icons and I can substitute files in the table. But I've decided to keep that instead. So for all notification, I'm creating another loop which will perform a subroutine task, the child task, and then push the uh, values in the same way as I did before to keep the order in the array. So I'm going to use a perform task which is gonna take the variable uh, icon and store it in a parameter one variable and then send it to a task. And uh, once that's uh, processed, it's gonna receive the return value variable ready icon. Now that ready icon will be pushed to a new array in the same order as a list weather icon array. So I'm gonna maintain the same order. So let's have a look uh, at the subroutine. I've created a new task which is called icons subroutine and this task will take the value of parameter one which was delivered by the um, JSON and change it into an icon so if the icons supposed to be sunny then it will return the ready icon variable uh, as sun and that and etc etc there is nine a different actions available and that's all being returned with the action return and then ready icon is assigned to whatever condition uh, needed. If you want to know more about uh, loops and subroutines there is a nice shortcut right now on the screen for you. Time for the main star, the auto, auto notification table. So basically what I did is I just loaded all the information into that notification. We need five columns I've set the width to a 70 and the height of the cell to 17 and then choose the center alignment just to make it look neat. Now, uh, next, so I'm creating two different icons, one for status bar and one for big icon and these are completely the same. They load the current weather conditions. So uh, I know that uh, this variable will contain an icon name and I use that icon name to uh, rename files in the same way that I'm going to use to display the current weather conditions. So in the tasker folder I've got a folder called weather and here I've got all the files stored. We need two of them, we need one for day and one for night because the codes assume the day and night icons so I just uh, change the color slightly and then assigned all the nine different icons for all the nine different code names for the icon uh, variable. So these are being loaded. Now, this is the exactly the same way I'm going to use it in a new notification. So in text, uh, we're going to load the following information title, obviously just put the weather wherever you want. In the subtext, I've used the city name. So this is your location of the nearest weather station. And in the text, uh, you're going to receive all the information from the um, arrays. So we're using first, we're using time, and that's going to display the current time and our time in intervals of three hours. Then we're going to use the temperature. Then we're going to load the icons from an array we've created. And then lastly, we're going to describe it what's going on, so weather conditions. Now that was the old one. I also have a new notification that will load the pictures that I've showed you previously. So instead of using uh, the subroutine, uh, you can now load the pictures directly. And I'm using uh, in a text just direct file names uh, and the file names are substituted with a variable from the list weather icon. So um, we need five of those, so for five different um, icons. So let's load the um, notifications. I've got two notifications, so you will see how they look like. Uh, the one with the bigger icons, those are texts. The one with the smaller icons, those are icons assigned through a subroutine. So you can choose wherever you want. If I click on one, it'll load the weather. Or if I click uh, via AutoShare, it loads the weather widget directly. You can choose whichever you want. If you don't want to use uh, 
AutoShare, you don't have to. If you want to use AutoShare, then uh, it loads the weather a little bit quicker. I'll show you now how to do this. So go back to the tasker and create a new task. It's weather intent on my task list. And you've got either intent, so we can use this intent, which is done, uh, which is a Google search box uh, activity. And uh, what we do, I'm gonna link this um, text somewhere so you could see it clearly. So it's come Google Android Google uh, quick search box dot Google underscore search. And we're going to use a extra string, which is our query for weather and use that as an activity. And that will load the Google Now weather search. Um, optionally, use the auto share and it's that easy. Just click edit, and get more intent and uh, you will see the weather intent already available for you. So just click on it, it will download it for you and set it automatically, then just okay it. Now, the difference between them is quite obvious. And uh, if you have AutoShare, you probably want to use the AutoShare instead. So I'll quickly show you the difference. If you load the uh, original intent without AutoShare, this is how it looks like. So loads the Google Now, then loads the weather, and then you can click on the weather if you want details. Now, if you want to use AutoShare, if you click on it, it loads the widget in a full screen uh, activity like this. So it's up to you. Now to make it all happen, what we have to do is go back to our notification and assign um, the auto apps command. So just go back to auto notification and click edit and you'll see the actions field and in action field commands on touch. I'm just going to use open weather. To intercept it, go to your task profiles and select auto apps. In auto apps, just type in open weather and link the uh, weather intent uh, task. And that's pretty much it. And you've got this one. So lastly, what you have to do is link our original task, which is create weather alert to Wi-Fi connected. Select invert and select your home Wi-Fi. This way, the moment you get disconnected from home Wi-Fi, uh, you get notification uh, with your weather update, which means you're close enough to get that umbrella again. Thanks so much for watching guys. Links for the um, written tutorial and the descriptions and the files and everything somewhere here. Or maybe this way, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know how to follow me, you watch this video, so the subscribe button is not that far. And I'll probably see you with the next tutorial very soon. So, see you soon. And, uh, yeah. <coughs> and I need to cough. Mm. Okay, again.